Welcome back, Benchwarmers. Today, we're going to be covering the 2024-25 NBA City Edition jerseys. The NBA has been coming out with these annually since 2017, and I, I feel like they're starting to run out of ideas. Honestly, man, why don't they just do one, like, new one every three to four years? We also want to touch on a new business venture for one of the NFL's top backs, where he is trying to bring athletes and fans closer together. I'm Brendan, nervous Laker fan. I'm Corey, Jersey Geek, and this is Our View from the Bench. Before we get started, if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss any one of the new episodes. Also, if you could please do us the favor, if you like what you see or hear, please don't forget to smash that like button. Smash it for us, come on. It's free. It's free for you, it's free for us. It helps out the channel a lot more than you probably think. Hell yeah. All right, Corey. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily NBA basketball that we're talking about, but it's uh, kind of having to do with the NBA a little bit. The City Connect jerseys have been dropped for the, what, this ninth year in a row now? Way too many. <laughs> and it's starting to get to be a little bit too much, yeah. Um, Corey and I took a peek. Bleacher Report had an article on it where they kind of just show, like, you know, the Twitter post by each team showing which jersey was launched and – uh yeah, like I said in the intro, I think they're starting to run out of ideas, man. Yeah, for real. There's a couple of them that I, I think it's Minnesota. I thought they already had that jersey before. I don't know what's different. It looked <laughs> like a similar design they had like two years ago. So I'm sure there's something slightly different. But there are a couple I'm like, yeah, we're just running out of ideas. We're just like slightly changing colors or we're like making weird like designs underneath the logo. I don't I don't know what's happening anymore. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah, it's way too much. Um, we'll link the Bleach Report article down in the description so you guys can check them all out. But we're here to cover just something quickly. Our two favorite and our two least favorite or worst or the ugliest jerseys that we've got. We're going to start on the top because we're going to try to put a positive spin on this, even though we pretty much hate them all. Um, I'll go first. Let's do every other. Okay. Right. Sounds good. My number two favorite jersey. I'm going to save the last one. And we're going to put them on the screen here. So that way, when we're talking about it, you can see it for the YouTube audience. For those on Spotify, thank you, by the way, for listening. But. If you ever want to check us out and see, you know, the cool things that we put on the screen or our ugly, beautiful faces, check out the <laughs> YouTube channel. All right. My second favorite one uh, on this launch is actually the Pistons, believe it or not. Uh, I think it's pretty clean. They have um, – it, it doesn't say anything different. It, it does use their name, Pistons, believe it or not. But the way that they do it – and again, all of them are ugly, so I have to pick something. Uh, yeah. But the way they do it is kind of clean. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of – uh, pizzazz it's not trying to get your attention like crazy and the cool thing that i think that sets it apart is that it's trying to use a little bit different colors than what like um you would normally see from them but without going like absurd like like a padres vice city or something you know what i mean they're not going too too abstract it just says pistons in a cool font um nice little light nike logo little off-white i think it looks pretty clean that's my second favorite one all right, not a bad choice. I mean, like you said, a lot of them are ugly, but if we got to pick two favorites, we got to pick two favorites. We got to pick them, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my number two then, um, I'm going with Indiana. Uh, it's kind of basically, from what I gather, if you're looking on YouTube, you can see it. It's basically a white version of the one they wore last year. So it's white, but on the side, down the stripe, they've got that like graffiti yellow, like looks like paint was kind of splashed or thrown on a black background. Uh, it's got that teal writing on the indie on the chest and on, on the sleeves as well, kind of on the edges. I think it looks nice. It's not anything crazy to write home about, but for some of the ones that we've seen over the years, I think this one is – it's kind of like their Miami Vice in indie is kind of – like, that's a good point. Yeah, that kind of vibe. It's got that, like, vibrant, bright color that's not normally what they wear. So I think it's a nice little uh, addition to their – closet although again there's too many jerseys so we can stop for a couple years right yeah the font is pretty cool and i like the paint splatter as opposed to just being like uh like yellow the paint splatter yeah. looks kind of cool so all right all right okay let's move on then to my favorite one again we can only pick two because bro well this list is is rough <laughs> but it's gonna be kind of a little bit of a repeat from an episode that we did a while back where we just covered jerseys in general uh because it's one of my all-time favorites just overall the Toronto Raptors are bringing back the Raptor doing the Vince Carter through the legs. And I couldn't be more stoked. The old school dinosaur is back on the front. And I'm happy about it. It'll be on the screen here. It just, and look, it just looks just like Vince Carter. It looks just like him. Dude, honestly, it's really cool because not only is it the logo because it's the old dinosaur, but to make it have the ball go between its legs like it's doing the Vince Carter iconic dunk is awesome. And they actually just announced, I think, yesterday because it's their yes. third anniversary season this year coming up. They're going to retire Vince Carter's number, so he's going to be the first Raptor to have his number up in the Raptors, which is actually good, good. for him. 
Yeah, I'm excited. It's awesome. I love Vince Carter, bro. He seems like he he was like always the professional man. He you never heard anything bad about him as a teammate or anything like that. Just a constant professional and obviously extremely talented. Half man, half amazing. So yeah, he's the uh, first. He the first guy to play in four different er, uh, decades, yes, right? Decades, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> nuts, nuts. So yeah, that was my favorite. Bring it back, the dinosaur. All right, nice. Okay, so. For my number one, this is kind of a random one, I think. But again, some of these jerseys are weird. But I like mm-hmm. Memphis's. Uh, it's a little different. It's not anything what we're used to with their colors or font that they're using. But I guess it's a callback to a 1970 to 75 team called the Memphis Sounds of the ABA. So it's kind of got that font that they use. It's kind of big and bubbly. Kind of reminds me definitely of the 70s for sure. It yeah, like a Motown vibe. Yeah, I got a little that. No, they're not in Motown. Show, but... No, but that 70s show feel to it with a kind of mm-hmm. with a bubbly font. So I think it looks nice it's again it's something completely different from their normal uh, color scheme so it's something different and check it out and, I'm, and again it's kind of pays homage to an old aba team so i think that's always kind of cool yeah that's pretty cool i like that and red is my favorite color so it's uh it's a nice red it's pretty cool <laughs> well we're gonna talk about good okay hold we're on gonna we're gonna talk about the bad wait, wait stop pause okay all right no we didn't plan for this but we're gonna have to we just got this breaking news thing on my phone that cat is being traded to the knicks can we just like initially since we're in basketball just do like initial thoughts yes what yes gonna happen or what we think of that possibility of this happening right now okay i saw it too i saw it too i'm glad that you brought it up to be honest with you um let's do this the trade is I, I, it's not technically complete but it's like one of those like agreements that's kind of in sound Carl Anthony Towns is finally leaving Minnesota, being traded to the New York Knicks. They are immediately breaking up the Nova party, even though they just put it together. And Dante DiVincenzo and Julius Randle will be heading to Minnesota. Um, Give me your initial thoughts on it from one of the team's perspectives, and I'll do the other. Okay. If I'm the Knicks, I don't quite understand it. Okay. Um, if... He played for uh, Cat played for Thibodeau before in Minnesota, and not that they didn't have a good relationship or anything, but I feel like Thibodeau kind of runs people to the end of the core, and then they don't want to be around him anymore. He kind of runs yeah. people wrong after a long period of time. So I wonder how that relationship will reconvene here now in New York. Also, if you're the Knicks and you have no Mitchell Robinson because of injury, which is why mm-hmm. you're trading for Cat, but you also lost Hartenstein, who's playing mm-hmm. defense in the paint. Cat doesn't do that. That's it's why not not Cat. For sure. <laughs> That's why they got Gobert to play behind him in Minnesota in the first place. So, mm-hmm. and him and Brunson are injury prone, it seems like. So, also, if any of those two get hurt and they have no DiVincenzo, I know they brought in Mikhail Bridges, but like if if Brunson or Cat goes down, they're, they have nothing left now. There's no size inside the paint. It just doesn't make any sense if you're the Knicks. I don't quite understand what they're doing. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, to add to it, the. The only thing that I'll say is they're getting somebody, but they're giving up somebody who's also injury prone in Julius Randle. So, um, but to your point, I mean, it still this still holds true. He's injury prone and he's on the team. So, um, okay, I, I I agree with you. To be honest with you, from a Knicks perspective, I, I don't get it. I, are they? Is there a plan to give up 110 points and score 130 every game? Is that what it is? Because to your point, there is zero defense on this team. Your starting point guard is arguably the shortest in the league. Um, you're giving up the only person who tried on the wings, uh, with Julius Randle, maybe Mikhail Bridges, I guess. Sure. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. yeah but nice. it's rough. Yeah. No Hardenstein, no Mitchell, not great, but we'll see how it pans out. You know, maybe, maybe Thibodeau will get it going. Okay. So let me give it then from the Minnesota, uh, perspective. This is fucking awesome. Um, <laughs> I think Cat is kind of what has been holding them back. Granted, he 25 12 a game, sure. That's like his career average is probably, I don't know, I'm making that up. I'm sure it's probably near there because he can score. He's decent. Yeah. But there's just something about how soft he is when it comes down to how tough the playoffs are that I think this is lights out. They don't need a two bigs, the twin towers in the in the paint, because it was just getting clogged. Cat really had to play on the perimeter anyways, because Gobert can't be farther than five feet from the paint in order for him to be effective really on any end of the court, whether that's offense or defense, to be honest with you. Um, So now he just gets to focus on defense and rebounding. And you have another wing in Randall who will pull it out. He's a better three point shooter than cat. I believe maybe I could double check that while you're uh, kind of giving a comment Um, and getting DiVincenzo, a, 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 an awesome three point shooter who is high volume, 
high percentage three point shooter, I think is great. I think Minnesota is scarier now than they were last year. Yeah, I I completely agree. I think DiVincenzo, they already have Alexander Walker, who's a 3 and D guy, Anthony Edwards, Mike Conley, and Gobert. That's like a nice six guys right there you can start. I mean, Conley's numbers, minutes will go down, so Ant might play the one a little bit. But if DiVincenzo's in there and Alexander Walker at the top and Gobert in the paint, that's a a really good defensive thing to have as far as – I mean, they were the number one defense last year. And I think part of the reason that they decided to trade Cat is, one, they'll have to give him an extension shortly here, I'm assuming – also, mm. when he was out last year, they still played well and were still able to get the, the top one of the top seeds without him for a good chunk of time. So they obviously realized they don't need him in order to be better. And I think with Randall, who's going to have a nice mid-range game, him and Gobert can kind of take care of the paint offensively, and then the other guys can all spread out and shoot from downtown. I think it's a win-win. Yeah, yeah. Let me retract my previous statement, though. Um, <laughs> on a, on the same amount of attempts on average, Julius Randall's career is a 33% free uh, three-point shooter, and Cat is a... Check this out, bro. Cat career is thirty nine point eight percent from three. Yeah, that's on f- almost five attempts a game. That's not terrible. No, that's so, actually really good. So maybe not the three point portion, but that's really all that he offers. Um, Randall's a big body that can kind of switch it up and play that four instead of having two fives out there. So I'm glad you brought it up. I think this is a, a an okay move for the Knicks. I'm confused as to what they want to do, but I think it's a great move for the Timberwolves. I could not agree more. I think the Timberwolves are going to win this deal in the long run. So good luck to the Knicks. Yeah. Not great for the West, though. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the more I think about it. Damn it. Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that part. You're right. <laughs> it's pretty good. We don't need more damn competition. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. Now, let's get into the worst jerseys, in our opinion, uh, for this upcoming City Edition. Is that what it's called? Right? Yeah, city Edition, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll do it in the same order. And this has nothing to do – just before I say anything, this has nothing to do <laughs> with the team. Okay? I just want to put that out there. My second my second worst one is the Boston Celtics. Yes. has absolutely nothing to do with the team. It is arguably the most boring one on here besides my first one. It is literally a ugly dark black green jersey with green trim and highlighter green sides with highlighter green Celtics on the front. It is – I feel like this is something they went to like an elementary school somewhere in the Boston area, and they just asked some five-year-old like, what do you think we should wear next season? And that's what he came up with. They're like, genius. It's terrible. It's on the screen here. You can see it. I- I can't agree more. I think that's part of the reason that they need to stop doing the jerseys every year is because the designs, they're like watered down. We don't have it's, – it's like American Idol, those, those, those shows. Like the first year or two, they find something really cool and awesome and new and great. And then after a while, like, okay, you've done this. We found everything. Like what else are we going to do? Like take some time off in between. Have there some anticipation to build in between. I don't need a new jersey every single year, especially if they're not going to be that good. Like, just yeah. take a break. It's a money grab, obviously, course, but yeah. I just feel like it's just like, who's buying these? Oof. Yeah. It's ugly. It's terrible. Okay. Your second least favorite one. So my second favorite, or worst, I should say, is going to be the Golden State Warriors. I don't. I, it's like <laughs> they tried to combine too many different eras into one jersey. So it says <laughs> so Golden true. State with Golden and State up in top and bottom, like the circle where there typically is the train or the, the tree middle. But there's nothing in the middle. It's just blank. And it's like... <laughs> dark navy blue they wore with the i believe team so it's got that color red and yellow kind of on the stripes and on the sleeves but again it just looks like there's something missing in the middle there's no number on the middle or the front like it, it just, just fell off so yeah. whatever was there fell off yeah and it, it, it looking at it in the photo if you're looking on youtube the, the circle in between the golden state part of the top and bottom it almost looks like they literally had some logo in there and they just pulled it out like i can see the circle like 100 like, percent yeah very strange so i don't quite understand what they're doing. I, th- I mean, the font itself that they use for Golden State is okay because it reminds me of the I Believe team, but the rest of the design is questionable at best. Yeah, not great, to be honest with you, 100%. All right, what's your worst then, sir? <sighs> My worst one? I mean, I'm mean, I mean, sad to even say this, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, well, take me out to the ball game. I root, root, root for the home team. The Lakers is... Yeah trash bad trash they took just the longest standing fun name for the lakers that is lake show which by the way was in the 80s <laughs> for real and then they just put it on a purpley black jersey and said that's good sell that gosh this is fucking terrible bro 
Dude, I, that's what I'm saying. They do too many of them. They're watered down. They don't have any new fresh designs or ideas. They need to take a break. Every, I didn't like the last year's either. It was like a pyramid of Lakers. Yeah. Or something, whatever, yeah. Los Angeles or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't I didn't understand that one either. That this, was terrible too. I would love to hear the explanation behind some of these designs, but some of them are so bad I, I don't even know if I need to know them. Or I why. think it's drugs, probably. Oh, hey, That's hey, probably the explanation. Hey, if you can get on some drugs and somebody wants to pay you for these weird designs, I guess you hey, do. Hey, true, something. man. Hey, hey, I'll do drugs for you guys if you guys want to pay me a bunch of money to do ugly shit. I'll do it. No problem. <laughs> it's terrible. Okay, what's your least favorite one? All right, my least favorite one is only because I think it's the most boring. And again, I think they ran out of ideas and we're like, we don't know what to do. It's the Miami Heat. The Heat culture thing is getting out of control. Every jersey and everything, their court when they did the uh, jerseys or the um, in season tournament with the Heat words inside the paint. I just, this one is literally just a red, all red jersey. It says Heat about this big. If you're looking on YouTube, it's about this big in the chest. And then it says culture and much bigger below it. And that's it. That's all it says. Heat culture. Nothing else. Yeah, the, the the comment on the Bleacher Report article set me, bro. I was just like, okay, that's pretty hilarious. It says, quote, Nike really slaps culture on every piece of heat attire and calls it a day. <laughs> I'm not wrong at all. It's kind of <laughs> sad. It's so bad, bro. You know what's so crazy, too? When we put the list together and I was looking at it, the my two least favorite your two least favorite are arguably the staples of the NBA. Lakers, Celtics, oh. Heat, Warriors. Have the worst fucking jerseys of all. What the hell? Are freaking the mainstays of the NBA can't get good stuff? Again, it's just it's too much. And and I mean, we didn't even put the Bulls in there, but theirs wasn't much better. They could have been in here too. It'd be all that'd be the top five most franchises with, with titles in the league mm-hmm. that would be on this list. And I guess San Antonio could be up here too. They're just as bad. Those guys are also pretty ugly. They're all ugly, to be honest with you. But whatever, turquoise, I don't know. It's mm-hmm. it's gross. I just, again, I, I know I get it. It's for the money. I work in the sports world industry merchandise, so I get it. It's, it's a money draw, money grab, but like after Trash. a while, not only that, the other thing with the NBA, we've talked about this before in other episodes, is the whole home and road thing doesn't exist anymore. It's city and addition and icon and association, and you can pick whatever the hell one you want to wear, wherever the hell you want to wear it. So if I turn on the TV, I don't know who's home or road or who's even playing until I find out what letters are on the screen on the scoreboard at the bottom. It, it shouldn't be like that, but we are where we are. Here we are. Money is rules all, right? Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to the second topic, but wait. I want to remind everybody that's watching again, we have a special episode coming up, episode 100. This that we are listening to right now is 97 of RV from the Bench. Yes, 90 freaking 7, bro. We've made it to 97. And we have a special one for 100. If you didn't hear the last one, we have a special guest coming up, uh, someone that we consider special at least. Um, And we're going to have just like a little bit of a QA, and a little conversation with our guest and – just make sure you check it out. That should be – we're going to record on the 3rd. We're going to interview him then, and we, we should have it up within the next day or so after that. So look for episode 100 with our special guest coming out uh, towards the end of next week. Yeah, and actually uh, talked to our special guest uh, just the other day to confirm we're all good and you know send in what kind of topics we're going to talk about and everything. So we're, he's excited as well to be on the podcast. So. Awesome, man. I'm stoked. I'm stoked for it. What is that? Oh, actually, we have we have another story coming up. Yes, let's kick it out to the field here. We have a breaking news. Brennan, Corey. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Brennan. Uh, Thank you so much. Yes, we do have an update here. We've got Nando and Corey here on the scene where we're going to be discussing our opportunity for that win streak. We've updated some things with the roster. We've got some waiver wire things. And we're here to show you matchup for week four. Corey, Nando, thank you for joining. Nando, yeah, welcome back course. again. Hello, hello. <sighs> All right, so we were a little bit more active on the waiver wire. Not as busy as the beginning, but definitely not as dead as last week. On the screen, you're going to see a couple of additions here um, to our team. The first one here, and by our team, I mean my team. And by my team, I mean Nando's team. Uh, <laughs> The first one that we see here, yeah, your team, exactly. The first one that we see here is uh, we picked up Deontay Johnson. We were needing, we've been in need for receiver help. Yeah, so Devontae that's... Adams is out this week. So we decided to go with Deontay. Now, Nando, I gave you a shit at the beginning <laughs> of your draft because you drafted Deontay Johnson. Yet, here we are picking him up. So I semi take it back, but for those of you who know football and fantasy football, Corey, explain why Bryce Young was just not it. Yeah, I don't. There's a whole lot of problems with Bryce. Young. 
And the the, the, the the saddest part is that they brought in a new offensive minded coach to like fix him and improve him. And it looked worse in those first two weeks, which is why they ended up benching him. So we knew the first two weeks, Deontay Johnson was not going to get any real receptions or any yards because Bryce Young is basically running for his life every play. Now that Andy Dalton's in, there's a mature quarterback who knows how to run an offense, probably a little more play action, which might open up some things for Deontay on the back end of it. So that's kind of what we're hoping for. But like you mentioned, we've just been trying to figure out our wide receiver position the entire time that this league has been going on so far. It's been rough. It's been rough, especially with our freaking number one pick. Well, number one receiver pick out with uh, Devontae Adams. I know that hurts you in real life, Nando. So uh, it's going to be a tough week this week because Devontae and Max Crosby are out for injury. But let's try to stick to our fantasy team. But we're going to kind of keep it with the, uh, I guess the Panthers might be better than we originally thought as long as Dalton's playing theme. And express to you, or tell tell the audience here why, because you've, you've actually described it pretty well on – Thoughts on picking up Chubba Hubbard as the starting back in Carolina and reasons for letting Carson Steele go, a back that I personally was kind of excited for. Uh, you kind of mentioned it, and I think it was a pretty good idea. It's, uh, you know, Kansas City has a fantastic offense. You know, you would expect you'd want a player from Kansas City, especially if there's others sitting out. Yep. But right now he technically still is a rookie, and rookies don't get as much projections and points, and this is where fantasy's at. We need the points. We need Facts. to be running those balls to get – those points for me, and without that, it may be a better choice to pick up Chubba Hubbard because those points are at least guaranteed more. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And to add to that, right, with the guarantee is eventually Isaiah Pacheco, their lead back, is going to come back. So with Carson Steele kind of having just a couple weeks to play, they've got a bye week coming up and some tough matchups. Nando made the executive call to say, you know what, let's get this starting. Let's get the starting back for a team that's starting to blossom with Dalton. So we're actually adding two Panthers this week. Yeah. And, uh, it's weird, but, uh, <laughs> hey, somebody's got to score points for this damn team, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the Panthers do have to go out on the field and run some offensive plays, whether it's a three and out every time or not. They still got to go out there. So somebody's we're hoping for touchdowns. but Well, uh, yeah, obviously that's what we're hoping for. But as <laughs> a Panther fan, you have to know that's not a possibility, but we don't care. We're talking fantasy. We just want yards. We don't even – they don't have to score touchdowns. Ideally, that would be awesome if we can get of some of those. But if Deontay Johnson can get 130 yards receiving but no touchdowns, I'll still take the 130 yards. 100%. 100%. So with that being said, uh, on the on the screen now, you will see the final Week 2 matchup. We are – or Week 2? Why the hell? Like, week what? 4 <laughs> matchup. I don't know where I'm at. Apparently, I'm back in Week 2. You will see the <laughs> final Week 4 matchup for us this week. I have a, I have some positive feelings now. You never really know, right? But the fact that Josh that that Buffalo and Baltimore are playing each other, two pretty good defensive teams, and he's got three offensive players, the three best offensive players from those teams, is pretty makes me feel a little better. Um, I'm hoping they beat each other up on defense. But as you can see here, who do you think's carrying the load this week, Nando? Are you, you, is Brock Bowers gonna do all the work for Vegas? Oh, of course, Brock Bowers and Kenneth. No, not Kenneth Walker. Um, his name's you know shooting right past me. I know we have Zamir White that's also going to be in there. But You're talking about Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers, my favorite law firm, is going <laughs> to probably get a a bit more uh, targets this uh, this game for probably. sure. But besides all that, too, just before we shoot past all this, you kind of missed on one thing with Matt Stafford. What? Jordan mm. Addison just came back for us and is fully healthy and before we made any transactions we had to toss out matt stafford it's not that he's a bad qb overall you know he did great for us uh last week passing it to Kyron williams which would have been yeah. useful <laughs> but it's just the points we're probably gonna sit have joe burrow sit all this time and i made a little proposition that if anything we'll toss out our defense for a, a little bit just to get another qb if needed and yeah that's a good point. Right now, we're point. sitting we're sitting a little strong, so I think we're going to be fine with Joe Burrow. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Right now, we're favorites technically this week. He is sitting Tyreek Hill. He was originally projected to win, but he's sit, he's sitting Tyreek Hill, so that's going to be, uh, I guess, helpful. Um, or it would be a hindrance because it'd be nice to have him starting Tyreek Hill, where he could only get like maybe a couple points. Because obviously, who knows what's going on with that offense? But um, projected to win right now by four points, not much. And again. Anything can happen in projections, but we, this is where we, we stand. We, we were losing originally by 10 points, so True. projections have changed. We'll take it. We'll take it. And honestly, he's got Kelsey, who 
Hasn't I mean, been... unless he's going to show up this this yeah. week. He hasn't shown up all year, so. Nope. <sighs> but that's pretty much it, Corey. Final thoughts? No, I feel good about this matchup. Uh, you know, I, I didn't know about the Tyreek Hill thing until you brought it up, but thinking back, we, we have Jalen Waddle, so we're doing the same thing. We're not playing Waddle because we don't know what the quarterback situation is going to be like in Miami for a while yeah. with two out. So, like, it makes sense that he took him out. Uh, as far as the Kelsey thing, they feel like most teams have been doubling him and he hasn't been getting a lot of receptions, which has opened up things for Rasheed Rice, which for us, I hope it continues this weekend. Agree. Agree. Nando, last thoughts before Corey sends it back? I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get a win. Right, well, let's hope Check we... back in when we come back for next week. All right, and let's toss it back to Corey and Brendan. All right, thanks, Corey, for that update. And uh, back to it, man. All right, before we get out of here, we have to talk. This isn't typically something we talk Well, we kind of did with the Jalen Brown episode, I guess, a while back. Yeah. If you haven't seen that. We did a full-depth episode about Jalen Brown and his entrepreneurial stuff that he does off the court. This is kind of a similar story with Austin Eckler, the former – I almost said – Charger. Almost Los Angeles, but I, I, San Diego Chargers. This is LA he was. Kansas. Um, former Charger Austin Eckler has this new thing that he's calling the Experience. Uh, it's an app. Uh, you want to tell us a little more about it because you're the one that kind of discovered the story. Yeah, dude, I think it's actually really cool because the way that he kind of sets it up, uh, the way that it's set up is when you think about it, right, autographs are some of the coolest things that you get, especially as a kid, right? You're trying to get autographs, but there's not a lot of – especially in today's day and age where money rules. You're yeah. paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars for autographs that you hope are real, that you hope are authenticated. Really? I mean really the only place you can get it is you know MLB, NFL websites right directly if you can try to trust it from there. Um, or you have to be lucky enough to go to games and get front row or be by the uh, tunnel or go to practices or you know OTAs for football. It's hard, right? To, for, for average fans, especially now that television, for, you, could, you could be a fan of you know an East Coast team on the West, vice versa. So his idea was basically to create an experience, ek experience, and you can see obviously it's a playoff of his name, where athletes and fans can come together for these opportunities. Um, and he's basically kind of created an app where you can log on and purchase experiences with athletes. Uh, it might expand right to more, uh, uh, you know, going forward, but um, initially it's just to be able to talk with athletes. And over the past three years, uh, Eckler invested roughly $800,000 of his own money, obviously, um, before kind of finding success in building this app. Within the first six months of it being live, experience generated $20,000 roughly uh, from around 500 or so fan engagements. The way that it works is it basically you pay the athlete and the app takes 20% of whatever you would pay. I think it's pretty cool. That's actually not that bad. It kind of, and one of the things that the features it says is it has in there is the personalized video messages. So it's kind of got a little bit of a cameo vibe to it as far True. as that goes, if you've ever used that before. Um, but there's other things on here, obviously, involved with the jerseys and autographs. And honestly, I think it's smart because, you know, like you mentioned, that people get autographs all the time or buy things from people or auctions or whatever, but you don't really know just because there's a certificate. But like, do you really know if it you came hope. from the or was autographed? Right. To get it directly from the player or the person, like, I mean, that's as authentic as they can get, I guess. And you have proof. There's a receipt. There's a, I mean, I'm sure there's photos of them signing these things before they sell them to you on their files. Um, I, I just, I think it's a smart idea. I, I just don't see any, I mean, what's, what's the worst that can happen out of it. And, and part of the thing too, is he's using his alma mater to kind of like get it started at Western Colorado and having those kids do it now with the NIL stuff. And they've already kind of seen some engagement and getting some money out of it. So again, if it's something that even the college kids can now do, and maybe even some of the smaller sports and athletes, True. Gymnastics and, you know, uh, lacrosse and other sports that we don't see the NBA or the NBA, but college basketball and college football players are the two main marquee sports. But mm -hmm. maybe it gives the other athletes an opportunity to create and get some money on their own, too. Yeah, very true. The only time, the only other sport that's kind of big and it's only really for like this much is like College World Series time because nobody really pays attention to college baseball until the College World Series. So, yeah. But yeah, no, I think it's pretty cool. Um, but it's just a way to be able to kind of get that. There's a handful of things that they offer, at least initially. It might expand. Corey mentioned uh, mentioned it with the personalized video messages. You can get autographed jerseys and other memorabilia. You can book one-on-one -on -one virtual training, right? So they can give you okay. tips on how they've you know gotten to this level. Um, 
you could do certain fantasy football requests. I doubt it's like I need a hundred yards and a touchdown this week. It's probably more like an appearance or something like yeah. that, or you know, something like that. But uh, and then one of the other things that they offer is like gaming sessions, right? A lot of the people that are in the NFL and the NBA grew up playing video games. Oh. Uh, my quarterback, to, one of them, he stops playing football actually around <laughs> uh, end of October because video games are his priority. So you can book gaming sessions with Kyler Murray or uh, Tyron Matthew or Devin Booker I know plays a lot. So I think that's kind of cool too. You could just literally pay to hang out with somebody famous, play some video games. It's kind of too. I mean, it's a win-win. The athletes get to make some extra money on the side. And if you're a person that wants an experience with a certain athlete that's offering it, you can obviously do so. So I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I, again, I think the college part of it with the NIL and letting those college kids have an opportunity to use it is an even bigger thing too. I think it's more, I think it's a bigger deal for the college athletes than it really is the professional athletes. Yeah, true. The only other caveat though, I think that will, that is where it is beneficial to the professional athletes is a lot of times you see all of this memorabilia being sold. Oh yeah. They don't, they sign something out of practice and some adult goes and sells. They don't get money from that. You know what no. I mean? Like, I mean, not everybody sells. Sometimes it's a little kid and they keep it for the rest of their life, right? But yeah. there's times where there's people out there that are professional signature hunters, right? This is like literally what they do. They get foul balls. They get home runs. They get all this stuff. They try to get signatures on it, and that's they sell it. Well, But the athlete doesn't get money from any of that, and this is a way to kind of cut that out. You know, you're, you're breaking out the middleman because that guy's charging extra money. Yeah. Right? That's a that's a business. He, he's offering a service. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of cool. It's a win-win. Win-win. Yeah, and you know, I've actually heard athletes that have been interviewed talk about how sometimes if they do autographs, they don't autograph anything for somebody over like the age of 18. If it's a kid or a teenager, they'll be happy to do it. But if it's an adult, they most likely don't even sign it because of what you just said. They don't want them to then turn around and just try to make a quick buck off of something they signed and they get no profit out of. So there yeah, are can... athletes that pay attention. Now, there might be special circumstances with certain adults, maybe somebody that's you know, on a different spectrum, special different, needs or something. Yeah. yeah. Before the, the rule are broken. But if it's a, just a typical person who's over 18 and they're like, no, you're just a, like you said, an autograph hunter. Like I'm just going to not sign for you. I'll sign to these kids and these people who actually care and want something to keep for themselves. Not just to because it's me, not for money. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's a way for that to happen. And if adult wants it, pay for it, brother. It is what oh. it is. Oh yeah. yeah. So, well, that's going to wrap it up here. Let us know down in the comments below if uh, which jersey you like, what you think of the trade the, between the Knicks and the Wolves. And what I really want to hear is, would you be interested in playing for any sort of experience? And if so, which experience would you like? Me, myself, a video game session kind of sounds pretty good, man. That sounds pretty good. What would you pay for, Corey? <sighs> a video experience. I don't think I would do the video game thing because I don't play like you, you guys. You don't really play. Yeah. So, yeah. I just listen to you guys play and yell at each other on the back. <laughs> so I don't need to do that. Um, I don't, I don't know. I guess maybe probably an autograph thing because I don't really do any kind of physical training. So I wouldn't need any kind of one on one training tips or anything. True. Well, maybe the fantasy football thing if we get That'd be kind of fun, huh? The blueprint to win. Maybe he's the champion. The next year we can pay to have Austin Eckler come help with the draft or something. That would be probably Yeah, fun. that's cool. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, let us know down in the comments below what you would like to experience. Appreciate everybody for stopping by, though. Thank you as always for seeing things from RV from the bench. I'm Brendan. And I'm Corey. Like we always say, enjoy the sports until we talk again. Peace. This was a Sycamore Fourth Studios production.